So we're going to talk about free accessibility testing tools because tools like JAWS cost $900, and that's generally what blind people use when you're using Windows computers. Um, I want to introduce myself. I've, I've, I'm Rob Porter, and I've worked, for, I've worked for Penn State for 13 years. I helped start the WebLine project. Uh, I worked for Wildcard for three years as of next month. And I have a passion for user interface and how computers uh, talk to different interfaces like screen readers, mobile devices. Uh, you know, blind people get around your site. It's very important to express. They get around your site using headings and lists, links, and forms. They have quick, quick ways to get to these items. Um, so. We want, you want to know why you want to use accessibility tools to test your websites. Well, you know, you may know someone who could use your help. It only takes a little bit of time to get in some good habits. Also, you may know someone who's colorblind and not know it. Uh, I know a lot of people are colorblind, and they hide the fact. It's frustrating when someone can't see your awesome content because color choices or font sizes. Sooner or later, you're going to need some kind of help, like me. As you get over 40, you're gonna, I, I am so close to needing bifocals, it's not funny. I'm doing this all the time. Um, so eventually we all become the, with the need of accessibility. And sooner or later, you may get sued. Penn State, where I formerly worked at, got sued by the National Foundation for the Blind. And that really shook up the university. And so if you're a governmental agency or you're selling to people, they, they could come after you, um, depending on what government you're in. So WCAG 2.0, we have something called the 508 Accessibility Standards, making life better for people. Uh, and for the web, there are WCAG. And there's three levels of 2.0. There's A, AA, and AAA. Um, so, if you go in with AAA standards, it has to do everything that AA and single A does. If you do AA, it has to do everything single A does. And to quote Paul Rowland, yeah, WCAG 2 AA is unattainium and mythical. So you don't need to go after AAA. It's just impossible. This web page is a list made by uh, Paul J. Adam, who I come across all the time. Uh, he's, he's a great resource for accessibility things. Let me see if I can go back. So he has a list of uh, the different levels and what you need to do to complete those levels. And when you click on, I am so sorry, I don't know what happened. When you click on one of the uh, items, it will actually take you to the W3 rules and stuff. So it's nice to have a checklist. I will have my slides soon after I'm done posted up. So if you don't want to write down the URLs, because there's going to be a lot, uh, they'll be ready for you. I, I use this checklist quite a bit. One of the first things you can do for a free test, can you get around your website with just a keyboard? Can you do almost everything without a mouse? Because there's people that have muscle uh, issues um, and they could only use, like, let's say, the tab key and the enter key. So for example, uh, you'll say today, if I go there, um, if I use the tab key, I can get around kind of, but I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. But if I go to, let's say this site, and I use the tab key, it's quite clear where I'm at. A lot of the uh, theming uh, bootstraps or whatever take away some of the focus. So you got to make sure focus is what the browser's intended. Um, so 
some of the operating systems have built-in tools. And pretty much, it's just Mac. Mac and uh, iPhone and iPad. Um, this is a list of the voiceover commands you need to do, key, key combinations. And it's best to use with Safari. I will do a demo on this towards the end of my talk. And likewise, this is uh, the iPhone key combinations that I will do a demo at the very end. Um, Windows, uh, Windows and Linux have no default tools, but you can install some. Um, like NVDA is free, and we'll go over that as well. Um, it's free, and it's actually written in Python, so we could even make it better. Paul missed my quote. So there's also uh, browser add-ons, and um, these are quite useful. So for example, the Axe one. Uh, if, you, if you're on a website and you, you install the Axe extension, you can go to, let's see, audits. <clears throat> perform an audit, and I'm just doing accessibility. Hopefully, uh, I don't know what's going on there. Let me refresh this. That's interesting. I'll zoom out. Zoom out. How do you zoom out? Just do the minus. Okay. Let me try to bring this here. And <laughs> That's funny. All right, I'm running the audit. And And it's, this is the actual good home page. Uh, so it passed, I think it passed most of it. Let's go to the other one. And I'm sorry, it doesn't work on the small screen, so I gotta bring it over here. Where did it go? That's Safari. It's hard to drive uh, backwards here. So it will give, give you a report and you could actually uh, submit a report to your bosses or whatever to tell you how you passed or you didn't pass. Um, it's pretty good, it's one of my favorite uh, ones. And it, there's Firefox and Chrome. Um, all right. And then uh, the other one, another one is a uh, contrast, WCAG contrast checker. And this one's really only for Firefox. And let me refresh this.
So this will tell you what uh, you need to do. You can try to find a color, and you have the two colors, the background and the foreground colors, and you can move them around. And you can see how things will pass or not pass according to the colors, because this is very important. And actually, I'm going to tell you, my eyes, sometimes it says it, it fails. And you just nudge it just a little bit, and it passes. I don't see any difference. But maybe other people do. Um, what? You see difference? No, but I mean, the, the level is kind of arbitrary. So yeah, it's, it's important if you need to pass the official test. Right. But I've done things where you get to like, well, it almost passes, and then, well, yeah. You Depending can, on what your legal requirements are, if you're very close to it, but you're not quite there, or you're there for like the big letter, or what is big text, what is small text, right. which is a bit arbitrary. Right, it doesn't say exactly how many pixels it is. Uh, another good tool uh, is, which is one of my favorite ones, is like having a screen reader, but it's all text. And you can see what the screen reader would really read out. And you can see what the headings are. And in this particular case, the headings are pretty good and the links. So if I go to the bad page, um, This is a page made up by W3C themselves. And then I run uh, fangs. For example, headings, you can see, well, how does someone get around to know if they want to read your content, how it's structured? Because visually, you can make things as beautiful as possible, but it doesn't matter to a screen reader. And you can, you can see how the other one was easy to get around just by looking at the outline that is produced. This is pretty huge, this, this fangs. Um, okay, let me. Any of the red star ones are like my favorite. <coughs> <coughs> so another one's wave and uh, wave is both for uh, Firefox and um, Chrome, and where is Wave? Uh, we'll use it over here. So Wave will give you a good summary of things that are wrong and you can see what your website looks like. Oh, let me refresh this again. You can see what your website looks like without any CSS. This is a little compressed because this is the resolution. Um, and it does contrast checking as well. I like the other one better, and there's another tool I like better for contrast checking, to be honest, because you're just guessing here, really. Um, headings maps is another one, and let me refresh this and get rid of. This is the bad one. So as you can see, the outline is pretty crappy. It's terrible. Blind person couldn't get around this very well. Uh, if I go back to the good page, <coughs> you can see the outline is pretty good. You could have different H1s and. and in a section or an article element. So it does make sense. I've tried this with numerous blind people. 
uh, it's HTML5 specific, and it really makes your document much better for them. And I think it actually makes it better for search engine optimization and everything like that. All right, I did find one external test, and it's the same as the one we just did. You just go to this website, paste in your website, and it'll test it and give you the same results. It's better just to have the extension, if you ask me. <coughs> All right, <clears throat> these two desktop applications I'm going to show you are really for designers who are designing your site for colors. And um, it's pretty, pretty huge. So Color Contrast Analyzer and Color Oracle. So the, uh, Color Contrast Analyzer is my favorite color one. So you could, you could put it in different colors and then you can, just like the other one, it just seems a little bit better. And you can see where you fail or you start passing in the color wheel and it's really, really nice. Um, remember, AAA is really probably not gonna happen, but AA is what, you, what you're going for. And if I made this probably over here, everything passes. This is very useful for the designers. And then the other one is, get this out of the way. Something like a, the color, um, I think I have it running. So, oh, that sucks. So, I can, uh, this doesn't work as well. You can see the color down there. It allows you to change it to the different color uh, visions that people will have. And for some reason, it's not sh totally showing up there. But if you watch the 12, you can see how things are, are changing for these people. And so you could almost make it camouflage. You can't see anything if you do, do things wrong. So it, it, uh, it shows you if you put the glasses on of a colorblind person, let's say, and you can you could get a real life uh, simulation. simulation. Yep, it's a simulation. And there's also, I didn't include it for some reason, Sim Daltonism. Uh, and let me see, how do I change this? Some people have problems with like blues or greens or whatever and this will simulate it. This screen is probably not the best for this particular test. So that one's called Sim Daltonism and I didn't include it for some reason. I will include it, let me. Next thing you want is automated testing. So Axe is another place you run into a lot of accessibility things. And Axe Core is an open source portable JavaScript library that executes automated accessibility testing inside your testing framework or browser of choice and outputs, outputs reports. So this is good for like a final test if you're shipping code or whatever. It can test your stuff for you. Maybe open up a browser, test everything, and submit a report. Uh, it reports similar to what we looked at earlier when I was doing Axe Core through Chrome, and it had a little audit. This is more, I think, for the server administrator getting ready to submit your code. You know, it's, it's a code testing framework. Um, I would say this is where my favorite stuff starts. Uh, in the book, bookmarklets, um, these will get you there faster for testing and getting to know things better. Uh, I would use these for the initial testing, especially the first one I showed you, the HTML sniffer. 
Uh, they work on most browsers. They're, they're booklets, uh, JavaScript booklets. So you could even use them on your iPhone or your, your Android. Uh, so this first one is called Code Sniffer. Uh, Code Sniffer. And let me close this. So if I run Code Sniffer, it's just a bookmark. Right? I have it here. It will show you how many errors um, and where they're at. I don't know why the screen is doing this. Let me refresh this. Huh. So it, it will, hey, let's try it on Chrome. Maybe it's just the way their site is. Let me show you here. <clears throat> I don't know why it's staying up. Okay, the inspector won't go away. <clears throat> there it is. All right, let's do this. Here we go. So this will show you all the errors, and some of them are false positives, especially if you, depending on what you have in your background, but it will actually point to you where the issue is on your page that you need to fix. It's very useful and it shows you the rules uh, where it's at and it, sometimes it makes suggestions for colors. It's very, very useful. I'd say this is probably one of my favorites, bar none. If you just, and you just need to go to um, this URL, which you'll get after my talk. Um, it's huge, it's huge, as Trump would say. Um, so Paul, Paul Adams, I mentioned him before, he has um, these bookmarklets and <clears throat> you should save this page or put all these bookmarks I have up top and it will take and do all these tests for you, you know, individually. So if you wanted to, for example, we'll go to um, this grayscale page and we'll hit grayscale and it just makes it all gray. Um, let's see. Headings. Uh, and it'll show you what the headings are. You can just read them H1, H2, H3. And also, so you just put them up here in your little bookmark thing and you can just run all these tests. Um, here's our, uh, this takes a second more, but you can get an idea of what is going on here. Uh, one of the better things, um, you can see if you have an alt text in your images pretty quickly and see if it makes sense instead of just, well, it's just an image. It should be more descriptive about what you're doing. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. His bookmarklets are pretty huge. Um, let's see if I have the list one here. So 
just a, a quick way to scan through your page. Um, so free screen readers, uh, I believe you absolutely need these because this is what the, uh, your audience is using. And also when you have ARIA live areas or modals or whatever, you need to know what is being presented to them as stuff pops up and, and goes away so they know how to get away. Because when a model pops up for us visually, we know it's a layer over top, but they don't know. And so it needs to be explained to them what's going on. Um, I will show you, hopefully this sound. So as you're going through, you're swiping through, and you double tap. Double tap. And anything you do, you double tap, double tap. Once you get to a web page, you can just swipe and it just goes through all the stuff. But they may want to use just headings or lists. So there's this rotor when they turn, you'll see here, where I turn and I can change to just headings. Um, and it, once you get to where you're at headings, you swipe up and down and it goes up and down the headings for you. So you can get kind of a real feel, that's how they use this. The iOS 11 has screen recording, which is nice. <laughs> I'm going backwards now. Um, so uh, the Mac has a lot. Um, I lost stuff. All right, so the Mac has a voiceover as well. And similarly with the headings and the list and the uh, links and the uh, form stuff, you can do the same thing with uh, voiceover for the Mac. So I'm gonna activate it. Welcome to Mac OS, voiceover is on. System preferences, accessibility window, accessibility features table, voiceover, selected has keyboard focus. Safari, city lights survey, accessible survey page, window, none, radio button, one of six has keyboard focus. You are currently city lights. All right, so once you're in here, you hit the control option command and you would do things like. Quick menu, explore site by topic, pop up button. You are heading level two, navigate heading level one, city lights survey. Heading level two, this week's survey, more city parks, Look, heading level two, last week's survey results. So you hit the age for heading and you hit the, uh, uh, out for the links, going through all the links. Link, MIT. My friend, um, Luis, inside of web content, to click this link. He has, this is really slow, the speed that he's talking. He has it, uh, five times faster. And that's how he scans a web page. He understand. He's trained himself to listen to very fast words. It blows my mind. I can't. I can't do it. Um, heading not found. Heading not so found. there's no headings on this one. If I go, no. Oh, no. Just link. Skip to an accessible demo page. Link. Heading level one three items. Inaccessible survey page, dash, last heading, heading level one, last heading, heading level one, three items. Quick menu, radio button, one of six. So it goes to the forms if you do the JK. One of six, radio button, two of six. You but, are currently on radio button, two of six. Inside you have no idea. The label's not marked right on this one, so you have no idea you're in the which city, so you need labels to go around with your inputs. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you don't, if you just use placeholders, that's really for visual people. It doesn't come across. 
So you absolutely need labels. Even if you take and put the label, the word, and span, and visually throw it off the screen because you want this pretty thing, you need labels because they won't know what is going on in your form and be frustrated. Status menu, accessibility menu, 10 item, system preferences, accessibility. All right. <clears throat> so this next one is NVDA. The problem with this is to run it, I have to run. This doesn't stay on, so I have to turn it on. So you can get Windows VMs if you have a Mac for free. Uh, I'm not sure about Linux. Do you know, Paul, if you can get them for Linux? Well, you can just run. Yeah. You just get nagged like this because you get a free version. But there's a, there's a web page where you can do this. <clears throat> NVDA is probably as close as you can get the JAWS without uh, $900. Warning, <laughs> if you're using a small keyboard that doesn't have insert, like the Mac keyboards, you have to change the modifier because there's no insert key. And there's a caps lock option now. Um, When you're using NVDA, they're made to be used with Firefox only, really. If you use any other browser, it's not going to be as good. So this one here, you do the same thing. You have a um, uh, cap lock, caps lock here. And if I just uh, hit like the, this one has different uh, bindings. So if I hit the F. No association at all. If oh, that was the and, and you can hit uh, headings. So headings, lists, uh, they, they read your headings to know if they're going to read your page or not. And if it's not interesting or compelling, they're just going to move along, really, because they don't have all the time to listen to the whole web page. You know, if, if we don't see the web page rendered in three seconds and don't understand it, we're moving on. So that's how they decide what they're going to do. All right. Here, uh, when I give you my, um, <clears throat> when I give you my slides, here's a link for 10 free ones you can use. And there's Linux. And Linux has free ones too, but you have to add them on. Um, and so <coughs> we know that Plone works really well for accessibility, except for what your content editors put in there. You know, you, you don't have as much control over that. Um, so there's this Axe, again, core plugin. And we've, uh, where did I put it? Here. So this is, um, I work for Wildcard, and this is Castle. <clears throat> if I add a page, there's a there's content checking going on once you save and publish the page uh, um, for SEO and everything. But more importantly for me, uh, if I come in here and I start putting.
let's say I put headings in the wrong orders. That makes no sense in an outline, right? If I save this, and then I try to publish it, it goes through and it does an SEO thing, but it also says, you have headers that are out of order, or you have background color that's not good contrast, or whatever the accessibility thing is. And I just lost my screen again. Um, it works really well. We have a lot of governmental um, contracts, and we need them to <clears throat> pass 508 and W3, WC, WCAG2. And uh, so that's it. Thank you for your time. And do you have any questions? Thank you. I'm sure well. the accessibility guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, not, not so much a question, but also um, if you can spare the resources, there's also um, Askatasun, which is um, a tool to uh, crawl through an entire site and do a lot of tests um, automatically. Uh, free? It's open source. It's um, it's really good. It just eats memory like crazy. It's Java-based, so um, if you you can run it as a Docker, but you need to give it 16 gigs before it will actually do something useful, but it is really useful. Well, eight gigs will just about do, but you can pipeline it, um, you can also build it. It has a Jenkins interface, so if you uh, need to maintain an entire site, you can build it in continuous integration, and it will just trawl through your entire, and it does alt, but also contrast, uh, does quite a lot of, uh, of checks, and you can also do Selenium tests with it. Um, it's, nice. it's a bit of work to set up, but if you need to guarantee on a continuous basis that your site is compliant, um, you have to include it in your continuous integration and slap your developers on the fingers when they change things. Can I ask you a favor? Can you send that to me in an email and I'll put it in my slides for everybody? Yes, I will. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.